Hi everyone, today's story is All Through the Year. The author of this book is Jane Godwin and the illustrator is Anna Walker. I wonder what this book's about. The girl is swinging in the tree and the boys are sitting underneath it reading a book. Hmm, let's turn it over and read the blurb. The blurb will tell us about the book. On the back of this book it says, Open this book and travel your way, all through the year and treasure each day. From this beloved author-illustrator team comes a timeless account of a year in the life of an Australian family, told through the eyes of a child and featuring each month of the year. Here is a book to give, to share and to treasure. Does this book sound interesting to you? It sounds interesting to me. I would love to know what this family is going to get up to in a year. And the illustrator has made the pictures so inviting. I can't wait to see what's in here. What's your favourite time of year? Mine, of course, is always summer, which in Australia is in December, January and February. All right, let's have a look at this book and see what we can find. Meet my family, mum and dad, my brothers big and small, our puppy who is very new, and me, I want to take you through, one year, twelve months in all. Each day is different from the last, some go slowly, some go fast. Making connections, this is a text to self-connection. When I look at this picture, I wonder who is in your family? What does your backyard look like? It's making me think about my backyard. If you've watched my video, you will have seen some of my backyard and that I love to grow my vegetables in my backyard. What's in your backyard? If you have a look at this picture, they don't have very much in their backyard except this big tree, but they do have a brand new baby and a brand new puppy. That girl having to stand on the box to reach the leaves in the trees. Let's see what this family is going to get up to throughout the year. January. In January, days stretch out with lots to do and find. We feel the sand, we tie the bait, we swim, we play, we stay up late and no one seems to mind. A time for games and sunny weather, mum and dad and us together. In Australia, January is summertime and the weather is hot. What is the weather like in January where you live? What do you think it means to tie the bait? Some people might know the answer to this. Tying the bait means putting some fish or some prawns or some kind of catch onto the end of a fishing line so that you can go and catch a fish. Something lots of Australians like to do. do you, have you ever gone fishing? In February, school begins. I'm nervous and it's hot. Our shoes are tight. The grass is brown. I wear my brother's hand-me-down. My tummy's in a knot. New girls, new boys, a new class pet. Which new teacher did you get? Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but in this book, I can already hear lots of rhyming words. Can you? Can you circle the rhyming words that you can see or hear in the text? Making connections. This is a text to world connection for me. Children all over the world go to school each weekday. So I'm thinking it's not just about me because I went to school and I'm still going to school as a teacher, but a text to world because I know that children everywhere all over the world must feel like this on the first day of school. What do you think? In March, the air feels cooler, softer, leaves turn crimson red. Then when they flutter to the ground, we make a pile and tumble round. Some fall on baby's head. We plant some bulbs, a daffodil, 
they hide till spring, so dark and still. March is the beginning of autumn. The weather begins to get cooler and the leaves on the trees dry out and begin to fall. What rhyming words can you find in this text? And what do you think a bulb is? If you have a look at the picture I've put in the box up above the pictures in the book, you will see what a bulb is. A bulb is a seed that's quite big and round, almost the size of a golf ball. And you put it into the ground and as the roots go down, the plant comes up out of the top, almost like a seed, but just bigger. And it only likes to come out in the cooler weather usually. Looks like a lot of fun rolling around in those leaves. April. In April there are hidden sparkling eggs to find and eat. We get up when the morning's new, the grass feels crisp and shines with dew. It's cold beneath our feet. For breakfast we have hot cross buns. They smell of cloves and cinnamon. Inferencing. Sometimes we can figure out what is going on by using the text and the visual clues or activating our prior knowledge, what we already know. Why are they looking for eggs, do you think? And why are the eggs sparkling at this time of year? Do you think that it might be Easter time when we go hunting for chocolate eggs? I see there's a hen in the picture laying a real egg but I think the more delicious eggs are the sparkling eggs. And they're sparkling because they're wrapped in all different kinds of coloured paper. I absolutely love Easter because I love chocolate. Do you like chocolate? May. In May we make a card for Mum, a cup of tea in bed. My brother bakes a chocolate cake. Mum loves the presents that we make. Dad buys her one instead. Oh boy, what is going on here? Why are they making things for Mum? I wonder what the present is that the little girl's wrapping up. What do you give your Mum on Mother's Day? I usually give my Mum a plant. In June the days are very short. Our breathing looks like steam. The night comes in the afternoon, and through the mist a shining moon makes tall trees all agleam. The shortest day, the longest night, a campfire burns a warming light. Activating prior knowledge. This is where you might be a super scientist and already have the information in your head to answer these questions. Why do you think the days are shorter in June? Well, if you're a super scientist, you will know that the Earth is round, but it sits a little bit off center. It's tilted. And as we rotate and the Earth rotates around the sun, it moves further away and closer to the sun. So in June for Australia, we are further away, which means it's cooler and the days are shorter. The next question is, why does your breath look like steam? Well, if you're a super scientist, again, you will know that when you breathe, you are breathing warm air from your body, heating it up out into the cold air. And when warm air meets cold air, it looks like steam. July. July is cold as cold can be, with snow on silver gums. We put on parkas, that's just jackets, scarves and hats, slide down the hill on plastic mats, numb fingers, frozen thumbs. Snow tumbles from the branches, listen. Sun shines on ice and makes it glisten. July is winter, but it only snows in the south of Australia. The northern parts of Australia are much warmer. Have you ever seen snow? Did you know that each snowflake is different from the other? 
If you have a look at the picture that I've put in the top corner, you will see a magnifying glass has looked closely at all of the snowflakes and they are all very different. Why do you think you have to wear different clothes in this kind of weather? If you have a look at the boy and girl, they certainly look very different to what they were wearing in January. You are right, it's because it's snowing, it is cold. You would get very sick if you wore your January clothes in winter in July. They look very toasty and warm and that's why I think their fingers and their thumbs might be a bit frozen because even though they're toasty warm, if you put your hand on snow, will it get wet? Yes, yes it will. Draw a picture of what you would do if you were in the snow. I see that the baby has grown a little bit and it's having a look at the snowman that they have been building. I would love to make a snowman in winter, but it doesn't get cold enough on the Sunshine Coast. August. In August on the weekend days, I like to climb our tree and build a lookout by myself with curtains, a floor, a wooden shelf, a secret place for me. My brother thinks that he's the boss. He changes things and makes me cross. What a fantastic tree. Do you have a tree you can climb at your place? This tree looks very different from the way it did in January. Why do you think it looks different now? Well, because it's cold, it has lost all of its leaves. They have dried and fallen off. Do you remember back in March, I think it was, that the leaves dried out and started to fall off? So now it is just mostly branches. What a great cubby house this girl's building. What kind of things would your tree house have if you built one? She's got lots of exciting things up there. And I think her brother, even though he looks like he's being bossy, is actually helping her by handing things up to her to put in the tree house. What a nice thing to do. September comes with daffodils and blossom buds and rain. The sun is pale, the shadows long, as we all sing a football song and ride home on the train. Everybody has a team, a scarf, a song, a shout, a scream. Making connections. Do you remember the bulbs that were planted in March? I remember there was an empty flower pot underneath the tree and that's where they put the bulbs. If you have a look at the picture now, have a look, the daffodils have grown. They're beautiful big yellow flowers. Football is a big deal in Australia, whether you like rugby league, rugby union, soccer or AFL football, everybody usually has a team that they go for. My favourite team is called the Townsville Cowboys. They are a rugby league team. Do you have a favourite football team? October. I've been saving up all year for this one special day. My favourite thing's the carousel. My friends all love that one as well. I choose a dappled grey. My dad buys show bags full of treats. We walk home slowly, swapping sweets. Have you ever been to a show or a fair? In Australia, each state has its own show and everyone loves to go on the rides and buy show bags full of treats. What's your favourite ride at the show? For this little girl, she loves the horses on the carousel. A dappled grey is just what they use to describe the white horse with the grey spots all over it. She looks like she's having lots of fun. What would you buy if you went to the show? I know lots of people like to get the chocolates show bag. November's when we tidy desks, then put up decorations. We practice for our concert night. Our Christmas tree, it glows with light. It's time for celebration. Our teacher shouts, she makes a fuss. I wonder, is she sick of us? 
do you put on a school concert at the end of the year at your school? School is almost over for the year and it's time to put the Christmas decorations up and celebrate all of our hard work through the year. Sometimes we have friends who don't celebrate Christmas, but we always do other special things to make them feel included and they share their special religions and traditions with us. December. On Christmas Eve we try to sleep, but sleep it just won't come. Then somehow Christmas morning's here, beneath the tree our gifts appear. We open up each one, then eat and drink and laugh and play. It goes too fast this happy day. December is nice and hot again. It's time for family and friends to spend time together. In Australia we have six weeks of holidays. What do you do in your holidays? For a lot of us in Australia, we head straight to the beach. But some of us, we live in the middle of Australia where it's hot and dry and we might have to head to the dam or the swimming pool for a swim instead. The time has come to say goodbye to this another year. I hope you liked our journey through each month each page, each thing to do, and see, and touch, and hear. Now we're almost one year older, taller, smarter, brighter, bolder. A year has passed and many things look different now. Can you spot the changes that have happened over the 12 months? How have things changed at your house over the last year? When I look at this picture, I can see that the tree has more leaves on it over the next year. I can also see the tree house that the little girl built in the tree. I can see sunflowers where dad was digging and planting at the start of the year. I also see that the baby is not a baby anymore. He's walking. The little boy, he looks like he's gotten a bit taller. But the puppy, he's definitely grown. And something about the little girl that I said at the start. At the start of the story, she had to stand on a box to get into the tree. Now she doesn't need the box. She can do it all by herself. And if you have a close look at her t-shirt, I think she might need to go to the shop and buy a new one. She's getting so big now, her clothes don't fit anymore. Can you say the 12 months in the year? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Well done if you can remember all 12 of those. These are the seasons that we notice throughout the book. December, January and February were summer, that's when it was hot. March, April, May, that was autumn when it starts to cool down and I remember some daffodils being planted and the leaves were falling off the trees. June, July, August, this is winter time. This is when we had a look at those snowflakes and we learnt that each snowflake is different. September, October, November is spring. That's when all the babies are born and all of the flowers like to grow because the weather's starting to warm up again. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope that you enjoyed this book as much as I did. I love to look back and see how people, places and things have changed over time. I would love to know what you thought of this book and I look forward to reading your comments. If you want access to my latest read, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to let me know if you have a favourite book you would like me to read. See you next time.